uh, I want to begin with an illustration. And the illustration I need you to do is actually, everyone close your eyes really quick with me. And so I know some of you guys play music, some of you might play sports, and whatever it might be. And so imagine for a second, close your eyes, all right? And the picture is a future picture of a dream. And imagine that whatever you love to do best, you're doing it perfectly. So if you're a basketball player, you're LeBron James. If you're a piano player, you're Mozart, all right? And you're there, okay? That's the picture, okay? That's your future picture, okay? That's you in the future so many years later, all right? Now everyone, open your eyes, okay? So imagine for a second, okay, if that picture that you just saw, and you think of it like a dream, imagine if that was not a dream, but that in fact you could actually see the future, and you say to yourself, you know what? If it was only true, how would you do your life differently? Wouldn't you do your life differently? Wouldn't you play the piano differently? If you were playing sports and stuff like that, if you knew that reality was true, wouldn't you play basketball differently knowing that's where you would end? Well, the beautiful thing about the Bible says this, is that we know where our end will be. Our end will be the kingdom. And so I'm only going to start with one verse. And sorry, this isn't working. There we go. The one verse I want to share with you this morning is this. So Mark 1.18 says this. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And all God's people say, amen. So here's the thing, right? So the Bible says that the kingdom, right, which is the heavens right, and the earth and, and all these things that we realize that Mark gives a very short description. And Mark is the shortest of all four Gospels, and he's very choice with his words. And in this very quick verse, what he's doing is he's presenting a lot. So we're going to just begin with the kingdom. What does the kingdom mean for us? Well, the kingdom is the shalom. So I heard this year that you guys are focusing on shalom, which is to say this idea of not only the peace of God, but we could call it the flourishing of humanity, as I saw in a video that's been, I'm sure, shown to you guys. And so it's this reality of of the kingdom of God being brought on earth. It's the flourishing of humanity in that particular way. The kingdom, right, the reign and the rule of of God, it's the shaloming of God. To be able to say this, imagine for a second if we have a misunderstanding of the kingdom. So one of my very first missions trips, I went to Ukraine, and I was there, and I was presenting the gospel, and I was presenting the gospel to this one girl. She came to Christ, and she, she did the sinner's prayer. She you know, came and all these different things, and so I started explaining to her. I was like, hey, guess what heaven's going to be like? Heaven's going to be amazing, and she was like, yeah, heaven's going to be amazing. She's like, pastor, tell me more, and then she said to me, she's like, she paused for a minute, and I said, what do you think heaven's going to be like? She said, I think heaven is going to be like Disneyland. Now, you know what's fascinating is, one, uh, as the the person said, I'm from Southern California. I see you work at Disneyland, in fact, and so I can tell you this. uh, Disneyland is not like heaven. (laughs) In fact, it's not even anywhere near close. And the reality is, is that heaven, as we consider it, not so much as an imagination, but what is heaven? Heaven is the perfect restoration of all that was lost by the fall. For some of you who know this, creation, fall, redemption, restoration, that restoration piece is to be able to say everything, right, that we see wrong in this world will be made right. And the picture of the kingdom of God is something that we say, you know what, I long for it, I look forward to it. Revelation 21 says this in regards to just a picture. And so I wanted to give this to you. Notice what it says here. It says, um, Revelation 21, 3 and 4. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. Behold, I am making all things new. You know what that's the picture of? That's the picture of the shalom. That's the picture of us understanding what this idea of really, in essence, the kingdom of God will be at. Notice in particular the second part of the verse. The kingdom of God is at hand. So what is Jesus talking about when he says this amazing picture of what the kingdom is supposed to be like? And so again, at hand doesn't mean it's at hand, like it's on my hand. Literally what it means is that it's near. And what Jesus is actually doing in this verse, you know what he's saying? He's actually saying, you know what? It's like I'm bringing in, right, the present realities, right, of this, of what what the heavens will be like. It's like he's announcing for a second, imagine for a thing, this idea of rule and reign. He's saying there's a new sheriff in town. There's a new lord. And in doing so, what he's presenting, again, he's reversing the curse. And this is exactly, believe it or not, what we pray in our Lord's Prayer. And for those of you guys who grew up in the church, you know that in Matthew 6, Jesus taught us a prayer. What was that prayer? It's called the Lord's Prayer. And let's see how well we know it. Our Father, which art in heaven.
All right, we should have done that as a speed contest, but yeah, just joking, here we go. So guys, look at this really quick, right? Did you catch it when we pray in that prayer, we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you hear what you're praying? You're saying, God, everything I imagine about the kingdom, everything that you tell me and reveal to me in the word of God in regards to what, the he- what heaven will be like, I'm praying, God, that in present reality, here on earth, as it is in heaven, and the people of God, in particular you as the next generation of the people of God, what you come to realize is this, is what you're praying is you're saying, God, I want to see what heaven's going to be like here on earth. I want to see pictures of the kingdom now. This is what it means to believe in the shalom of God, to be able to say, you know what, let me see a glimpse of it now. And so what is it like? It's like when we sang songs of worship. You know what we're going to be doing in heaven? We're going to be worshiping around the throne of God, declaring again, he is the one who is worthy, declaring and worshiping God forevermore. That's a picture and a glimpse of heaven. To be able to love God perfectly, without distraction, without the idols of our heart, we're going to be able to do that perfectly. To be able to love one another, to be called in the city of God, to be able to love one another perfectly, the perfect reign and rule of Christ, beginning to be seeing it now. That one person who came to faith in Ukraine, a person coming to know Christ as their Lord and Savior, you know what you're seeing? You're seeing the reign and the rule of Christ go forward because one person is coming under the lordship of Jesus when they become a Christian. And you're saying to yourself, God, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. C.S. Lewis in his uh, novels, uh, in particular The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, it's kind of funny for a lot of reasons. One, you know C.S. Lewis was a genius, but two, uh, you might notice that his books actually were never meant for kids. In fact, uh, it's kind of been noted historically, he actually didn't like kids. Uh, he never wanted it to be produced in the movie either. And so there are all these kind of taboo things where it's kind of funny that you know, kids are drawn to the whole Narnia, Chronicle, Narnia Chronicles. But there's a great picture of that, that idea of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven that's actually presented in the movie. And we often miss the scene. So some of you guys who know the novels, you remember this particular thing where there's a snow queen. And that what it does is it represents everything about the fall, right? It's the frozenness. There's no life. There's nothing growing. And yet when Aslan comes into the picture, which is the picture of Jesus, which is exactly what Mark 15 is talking about, that the kingdom of God is at hand, things begin to change. And and I'm going to apologize in advance. The the clip I'm going to show you is a a clip that shows this idea of your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. It's a clip from the BBC version, not the Disney version. So that's almost like I'm lying to you. But here we go. Follow with me, right? It's not as good, but it at least presents what, what Lewis was trying to present and for all of us here to get what Mark 15 is teaching us. So watch this really quick as you consider what it means. What, what, we, what we're saying is, you know, the, the Snow Queen says, what's that noise? I don't know what it's about. Well, it's life. The, the tundra is melting. Sin and its reign and its rule are beginning to become diminished under the reign and the rule of Jesus. Uh, we sang this, believe it or not, over the Christmas holidays, or you might have sang this over the Christmas holidays, uh, we, uh, the hymn, Joy to the World. If you don't know it, there's a great part of, that, of, of the third stanza I love, and I'm just going to kind of recite it really quick, and maybe you can help me at the end. The third stanza says this, uh, Isaac Watts kind of theology being presented, No more let sins and sorrows go, grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found. Do you see it? This is the kingdom. This is the shalom, right, of God being presented. That as far as the curse, as far as where we see sin and its effects, God is bringing in the kingdom through the work of his son. The last thing I want to present here is just kind of going through the verse. It's really, in essence, what, what Jesus actually told his disciples. He says, repent and believe, believe in the gospel. And so we might ask the question as we end here to think through this, like, well, what does it mean for us to kind of practically then demonstrate the shalom of God? How do we bring this flourishing of humanity? And Jesus actually teaches on it. He says, hey, you know what? Repent. And so let's talk about that. Repentance is is what? Repentance is everything that was wrong in the fall, the effects of sin within our heart, we begin to see melt. And this idea then is our understanding of sin and its, its grappling of our hearts. When we repent, which is a 180 degree turn from sin, Right, that our backs are turned toward him. We begin to show, really, in essence, how God made us to flourish. 
we begin to see, in essence, right, this idea that our hearts, right, do the things, right? It's the frozen tundra, tundra going to signs of life. It's the birds. It's the plants. Every time we repent, we show the new heart that God gave us. We demonstrate that God has shalomed us. The video on shalom would talk about this idea of flourishing. Each person, relationship, group, system, business, family, nation, etc. And in all that, what we're seeing is this whole idea, right, that people are turning from their sins and coming under the reign and rule of Jesus. Well, why is it so important, right? It's important because the last part of it is to say this, is that we believe in the gospel, which is the second part of Jesus' Jesus's, uh, command, in particular in terms of teaching his disciples about the understanding of the kingdom. And some of us, when we think about the, the gospel, we ask ourselves the question, well, what is the gospel? Well, Tim Keller has a very quick snippet of the understanding of how can we define it. And he writes this, his gospel is this, we are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dared hope believe. Yet at the same very time, we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared hope. It's this understanding that for God so loved the world that despite the fact that it was broken, that he gave his one and only son to be loved, to be shalomed, we could even say to be flourished, through the work of Jesus Christ. And here is my hope, my prayer, my thought for you all as we end today, is that as you think about the shalom of God this entire year, not only first and foremost that he shalomed us while we were still yet enemies, he, he declared peace, that even though we ought to feel like enemies, he declared us as friends, as children, as sons and daughters of him, as he extended that shalom to us. So likewise, as we go out, as you live out your life, even as young men and women, that you go and you extend the shalom of God in such ways where you say, as we said in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I thought an appropriate way for us to end, if you can, bow your heads with me, is let's recite the Lord's Prayer together in significant understanding of what we're praying. We're praying and saying, God, may the shalom come upon earth as we see it as a heavenly reality. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. We forgive our debtors. Temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power let me pray. Father, I do pray, Father, for Philmont. Pray for these young men and women. We do pray, Father, as they consider in their lives, as they grow and mature, that they would not only know Christ, but may they make him know, not only, Father, to be disciples, followers of Jesus, but to also go and make disciples, not only to know that indeed you have shalomed us in Christ Jesus, you have extended the olive branch, you have declared peace, while we were yet still enemies, that likewise, Father, that they would go and see indeed that as the kingdom has been brought into their own life, so likewise, Father, that they would see the kingdom go forth here on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you so much for this time. Would you bless and allow the word of God to bear much fruit in their life. In Jesus' name we pray.